Henri Lefebvre's oeuvre offers a broadly Marxist analysis of how the productive force of capitalism impact upon urban life. The central thrust of his work reacts primarily to the intrusion of capitalism into the social, political and cultural rhythms of life and space. The effects of capitalism are primarily understood as the erasure of urban life worlds through the homogenization of rhythm. Question. Can Lefebvre's tools of analysis be used to capture socio-natural rhythms of the city, as well as the purely social, cultural and economic? If rhythm analysis attunes us to the hum of urban life worlds and captures their destruction as a form of homogenization, then can it also capture the rhythms of urban nature? Put another way, can we create a distinctly Lefebvrean nature? We address this task in three parts. We seek to extend Lefebvre's writing on rhythm analysis and urban life onto the less familiar ground of socio-nature and finally, scientific representation. So, three sets of questions. What are the original tenets of rhythm analysis and can we identify possible departure points into the socio-natural world? The fair's emphasis on the transdisciplinary and synthetic character of rhythm analysis may provide grounds for its extension in this way. Can rhythm analysis be used to capture socio-natural rhythms without doing excessive violence to Lefebvre's key precepts? Taking examples from a series of urban socio-natural systems, we generate oral representations of environmental data and explore how they resonate with Lefebvrean ideas of rhythm. Can this form of rhythm analysis be further extended to articulate the interrelation of human and natural rhythms beyond the urban sphere? What challenges and possibilities do rhythmic representations of techno-nature offer? What is the relation between science, rhythm and sound? The idea that cities are comprised of a sequence of rhythms has intuitive appeal to anyone who has sat and observed the passing urban scene from a street cafe. From the sound of traffic and staccato of pedestrian footfalls, to patterns of fenestration on buildings, cultural rhythms of rush hours and siestas, cities disclose a complex yet ordered whole, discernible to the careful observer. Lefebvre tells us in the rhythm analysis of Mediterranean cities that It is impossible to understand urban rhythms without referring to a general theory which we will call rhythm analysis. Rhythm analysis is based upon an understanding of rhythm as always linked to such and such a place, to its place, whether it be the heart, the fluttering of the eyelids, the movement of a street, or the tempo of a waltz. The rhythm is the essence of place, a relation, but also an internal durée a la Bergson, that discloses an intrinsic character of becoming. In doing so, rhythm analysis captures the specificity of times and places as they are expressed through various systems. Rhythm analysis is also Lefebvre's prescription, method, tool or way out. As concentrations of human activity, cities are major producers of rhythms and social time, generating a polyrhythmy which always results from a contradiction and also from a resistance to it defined as the struggle between the tendency to homogeneity and the want of diversity. In capturing the colonisation and homogenization of the life world by the forces of capital, rhythm analysis suggests a more socially sensitive critique of the effects of capitalism. Lefebvre never directly considered the role of nature or non-humans in the urban milieu, but he did emphasise some core tenets of rhythm analysis in general that may provide a suitable departure point for our exploration of socio-nature. One such point is the idea of synthesis. Lefebvre understands rhythm analysis as integrative of diverse realms. Consider the following quote, again taken from the rhythm analysis of Mediterranean cities. Rhythm analysis requires notions and aspects to be linked to it that analysis too often keeps separate. Times and spaces, the public and the private, the state political and the intimate. We're not also human and non-human, biological and social. Lefebvre approaches these possibilities himself, saying, this analysis of rhythms in all their magnitude, from particles to galaxies, has a transdisciplinary character. The door is certainly ajar then for a rhythm analysis of urban socio-natures. But further, beyond legitimising such departure, Lefebvre hints at how this may be achieved, saying that rhythm analysis gives itself as aim the least possible separation of the scientific from the poetic. The emphasis on synthesis and this talk of unifying poetic and scientific approaches provides a potential point of departure into the realms of socio-nature. Can rhythm analysis be worked through in light of current academic trends towards the non-human urban? While patently the, urban natures have tended to be ignored by epistemologies that assume the urban is an exclusively human domain. 
This neglect has had very real consequences for the ways in which cities are thought and planned, concealing the important contributions non-humans make to the urban world, for example through providing fresh air, biodiversity or clean water. The importance of non-humans to urban existence has been highlighted in a range of work on socio-natures. Some authors have emphasised the cyborg dimension of cities, the ways in which water, waste, air and other physical elements are interwoven through the urban infrastructure. Other authors have sought to reveal the bio-worlds of urban ecology and green space, bringing other species to cognizance through notions of cosmopolitics and conviviality. For example, Hinchliffe argues that we must learn to listen to non-human spatio-temporalities carefully as ways of being in their own right, if we are to successfully incorporate them into our future urban environments. The current vogue for sustainable cities demands that we develop new ways of capturing the ways in which non-humans and humans are related. Can rhythm analysis be put to this task? An example may help here. Urban rivers are not just rivers, but socio-natural flows. This discharge diagram shows the interrelation of natural rhythms, the flow variation reflecting different levels of rainfall each day, and social rhythms, the intradiurnal variation of release of water into the watercourse from homes and treatment plants that reflects the pre- and post-work rush. Our challenge is to make non-human rhythms palpable, but much groundwork has already been done by scientists and artists who speak for socio-nature because they listen carefully. Although most obviously a scientific artefact, the diagram also constitutes a picture that reveals a socio-natural rhythm one which is both integral to the city, both social and natural, and yet usually concealed from us. Let's return to what Lefebvre says about the representational challenge of rhythm analysis. Rhythms, rhythms, they reveal and hide being much more varied than in music or the so-called civil code of succession. Rhythm, music of the city, a picture which listens to itself, image in the present of a discontinuous sum. No camera, no image or sequence of images can show these rhythms. One needs equally attentive eyes and ears, a head, a memory, a heart. A memory, yes, to grasp the present other than in the immediate, restituted in its moments in the movement of various rhythms. This is a particularly rich quote, offering valuable insights into the practice of rhythm analysis. Rhythm reveals. Rhythm is the music of the city. It cannot be represented by either images or imaging devices. Rhythm is a picture that listens to itself. Rhythm is a picture that listens to itself. Let's listen to the diagram. What we have is the sound of socio nature in this case produced through the aural representation of a visual graph. The mixing of aural and visual senses that are most often strictly held apart was what the abstract expressionists of the early 20th century termed synesthesia, or the synthesis of senses. They asked questions which sought to uncover a universal artistic language of emotion through exploring the synthesis of the senses. What is the sound of red? How does blue feel? What does jazz taste of? Science is itself a synesthetic practice, creating data through the transformation of sensory experience. The flow meters that recorded the passing of water in the river did not see the water, but felt it, requiring the technicians to translate this into a visual format. Urban socio-nature is characterised by a set of rhythms and as such, rhythm analysis can be used to reveal, capture and resensitize us to them. Architects and planners are already realizing this to a lesser extent, working with soundscapes to help design livable places and capture the uniqueness of experiences associated with certain spaces.